when you're selling your business, I not only want to maximize what the offers are coming in, but I want to make sure that that business gets to the closing table. So I want to talk to you about the adjustments that we make on those financials and why I take some and why I don't take others. The biggest thing is that we're going to be doing a due diligence period once we go under contract with a buyer and the buyer is going to be going through all your financial information to see what we claimed is actually true and accurate. So I want to back up a little bit. I've talked to you before about discretionary earnings. Discretionary earnings is basically that number at the end of the day that is how much a buyer can expect to make from the business if they keep operating it in the same manner. And so what we do when we first start this process doing the broker's opinion of value is that we're unwinding everything that you're doing and unwinding everything your CPA is doing because you and your CPA are trying to reduce your tax liabilities. And when we, when I come in, we're going to unwind all that to see how much somebody could really make from the business. So what we're doing with that discretion earnings, we're taking the net profit of the business. We're adding back the owner's salary because we're assuming whoever buys is going to be an owner operator. We're adding back into expense because you're going to be paying off those loans and the buyer's not going to have those interest expense. We're going to be adding back depreciation and amortization because they're non-cash expenses. We're also going to be adding back any benefits that you're receiving through the business, such things as your health insurance, your 401k plan, things like that. And then we're also going to be adding back expenses that are not really needed for the business. We're going to be adding that back and that's what comes up with discretionary earnings. Now, when we're doing those adjustments to those discretionary expenses, sometimes I have a business owner that says, oh, well, you know, you can add this back or that back or this back. And I'm like, no, we can't add that stuff back. We just can't. And I want you to understand there's sometimes I can and there's sometimes I can't. And I want to give you a couple of examples. One is donations and charity. A lot of brokers will just say automatically, hey, we can add that back. That's a discretionary expense. But to me, you can't add that back and a buyer is going to challenge it if that donation is going to your biggest client. That happened to a locksmith business that I sold many years ago. The seller was donating every year to a softball team. And the reason he donated to the softball team is because his biggest client was the head coach of that team. Now, obviously, a buyer doesn't require that business and that coach walk in the biggest client they have and say, hey, you know, you donate to my softball team this year and say, ah, I'm not going to do that. Why would you do that to your biggest client? So in that case, I could not add back those donations because it could have affected the business itself. There's other types of situations like, you know, the seller will say, hey, my marketing and advertising budget last year, there was, you know, 20 thousand dollars in there. I spent it on marketing and advertising that didn't work out for me. So we can add that back. Anytime you add back anything in marketing and advertising, it gets a buyer really, really concerned at the end of the day because a buyer is going to look at that and go, how do I know truly and for sure that there was no work, no revenue generated from that advertising and marketing? So can hardly ever add back things like marketing and advertising itself. So I can give you a lot of different scenarios of sometimes when a seller tells me, hey, we can add this back and add that back and add this back. And I don't add it back. And sometimes sellers challenge me on that. And I, I and I always like to be challenged because we need to be on the same page at, at the end of the day. But what you need to understand as a business owner is I'm looking at the best interest of getting the business sold. We do not want to be in a situation where we go under contract with a buyer and the information in there that we presented in the beginning does not add up. And a buyer is challenging things and saying that should not be an add back. This should not be an add back. I don't believe this and I don't believe that. We got to make it so the due diligence process goes smoothly. So you have to be a little bit conservative when you're doing those addbacks.